Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name's Stephen and I'm a traditionally published fantasy author. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a covering letter, sometimes called a query letter. This is the initial letter you send to an agent when you want to get traditionally published. I've done some research so that you don't have to, looking at what agents have said when people have asked them various questions. All of the questions and answers I've found are from Twitter. If you look up the hashtag AskAgent, agents will periodically go on there and answer questions that people have posed and all of these have come from the agents on there. I will also then talk about my own covering letter and feedback that I got from my agent. The first question is, how important is the covering letter versus the writing? And an agent answered and said, it's fairly important. Obviously the writing is more important. What they're looking for in the letter is an awareness of what the hook of the book is that you're pitching. They want you to keep it brief. And also you have an awareness of the genre. And this is something that I always say that if you're writing in fa the fantasy genre, you should know a little bit about the industry, what books are coming out, what sort of the trends at the moment, who's very popular, just a general feel. You don't need to have read everything. You don't need to know absolutely everything, but a good general awareness of the genre that you're in is quite useful because then if you've done a certain trope or something and you said, but I'm aware that this is a commonly used trope, but I've twisted and done this, that shows that you are into that genre and you understand it. And that's the kind of thing that they're looking for, but put very briefly. An extreme example of this would be for you to say in your covering letter, I've written a quest book about somebody who's going to destroy a ring that's very, very powerful in a volcano. And if you hadn't read any of the books in that genre, the fantasy genre, you weren't aware of Lord of the Rings, that just kind of shows you don't really know what's going on within the area that you're writing. That is an extreme example, but you get the point. They want you to show that you know something of what's happening within the genre. Someone asked about the relevance of the content in the covering letter. So one guy said, I'm writing a story about a giant, but I'm also six foot eight. Is it relevant that I put this in? And all of the agents said, yes, because it's quite interesting. It shows that you have a unique perspective and point of view. It'd be quite good for in terms of marketing later on when they come to do it. And also it's kind of nice to know. So that's just like something that's relevant. Say for example, you're writing a book about knights. You might also say, in my spare time, um, I go to Renaissance fairs, I have my own full set of plate armor, regularly do weapons demonstrations. You know, that's quite useful, that's relevant to what you're writing about, and that's quite interesting. If you're writing a crime book, you might say, I'm a former crime journalist, or I'm a former police officer. And I'm not saying you have to have that relevant experience, but if you do, you should definitely include it because it shows you have a bit more insight into the subject that you're writing about. Someone asked, what is the key element of the covering letter? And an agent responded by saying, a clever pitch and a clear understanding of what is going on at the heart of the novel. So it's not just you listing out the events of the story in the covering letter. That's not what they want to see in the covering letter. They want you to say, it's a book about this, or it's investigating this, or I'm looking at this subject. That tells you nothing about the story. That could be any genre. It might You might say, um, dissecting racism within the 20th century. But then again, it could be any kind of story within that. I've not said if it's fiction or non-fiction, but you just need to say, what is the core concept at the heart of your book? Someone else asked, if I'm submitting to an agent and I've submitted to them in the past, should I mention this? And all of the agents said, yes, if they responded in a positive fashion, even if they ultimately rejected what you'd sent in. For example, you might say, I previously sent you a book about fishing. You really liked the characters, but you said it wasn't right for you at the time. Here's my new book about churches. So it just reminds them because an agent gets a lot of submissions every week, thousands every year. So if you can form a little bit of a connection with them and you can jog their memory, that's something that you should definitely do. Somebody asked, if I'm submitting a book that has previously been self-published, should I mention this? And all of the agents have said, yes, let them know about the book, let them know about what you've done with it, where you've published it, what the response has been. You may have published it in ebook and audiobook. So they just want to know a little bit more about the book. So do mention it, yes. 
Somebody else asked, would you say less is more when it comes to the covering letter? And all of the agents have said yes. However, they also like to know a little bit about you as an individual, your background, your situation, or whatever it might be, just so they have a bit more of a picture about you as a person. Somebody else asked, how important is the covering letter in terms of the approach? Should you make it witty? Should you, you know, just make it straightforward? And all of the agents have said, keep it simple and keep it straightforward and keep it as like a, treat it like an interview if you like, because you're writing to this person to form what is a business relationship with them and you don't know them. So don't try and be their friend or their mate or something like that. Just focus on the material and keep it very simple. Here's an extreme example that happened recently. This is from 2021, depending on when you're watching this video. Somebody sent their query letter in, but they also sent a parcel to the agent's office. And when they opened it, they found a plastic foot in a box. And in the letter it said, this is to get my foot in the door. And the agent was horrified. And all of the other agents said, don't do that. That's just, just no. It sends the wrong impression. It's not something you should be trying to do. You're not trying to win them over by being really funny. They don't care about that. What they want to focus on is the work. Is it really good? Is it really interesting? You as an individual, you as a person, you as a client will come later and you'll form a connection with your agent, but it's still a professional working relationship. So all of them said, don't do anything weird. Just keep it simple and keep it professional. Another question was, do you read the letter first or the actual content that you've sent in, the first three, five, however many chapters the agent has requested? And this varied from agent to agent. Some agents said they immediately start reading the book. They don't even look at the covering letter or anything else. They want to see, is it interesting? Has it hooked me? Now that's not to say page one, line one, someone gets shot or there's an explosion or something. They're looking for the feel for how you are as a writer. Does it flow well? Is it interesting? Am I intrigued and want to know more? So one agent said he'll start reading the book, maybe read the first couple of pages and if he likes it, he'll then go back and look at the covering letter and read it all, find out more about the person, the hook, the story in general, and then go back and read the rest of the material. Another agent said they read the covering letter first, get an understanding of who the person is, what they're submitting, and then go on to the material. Now obviously the book itself, the first X number of chapters that you've sent in, is more important, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't spend quite a bit of time on the covering letter, getting it right and getting it as clean and as simple and as precise as possible, because that's what they're all looking for. All of them said, keep it short, it should not be longer than one page. That was the absolute maximum that every agent has said. Another person said, how much detail should I put in the covering letter? And all of the agents said, keep it to the point in terms of it shouldn't be a list of the characters and what they're doing. So this happens and then this happens and then this happens. You need to boil it down much more simply and focus on the concept and the core of the story and the book without just describing a list of events. That's what they're really looking for in the query letter. Keep it as simple and as clean as possible. Before I forget, my covering letter is available in this ebook that I have written. It is available on Kindle, but it's also free if you're on Kindle Unlimited. Now, my covering letter is what got me my debut book. Uh, so I sent this to my agent. She read it, she liked it. She'd uh, read the first few chapters, then I sent the rest of the book to her. The other thing in this ebook is there's a lot of writing advice and there's the full story of how I find my agent. But in addition, the covering letter has my agent's feedback. So it's what she liked about the letter, what she didn't like, back and forth emails from me and her during the first early stages of when we were first communicating. So you can see exactly what I wrote in my covering letter, what her response was, what she felt about it, and, and that sort of back and forth. That's really quite useful. So check it out. It's on Kindle and Kindle Unlimited. The last thing I wanted to mention is a new hashtag. It, I mentioned Ask Agent, which you can go and look at at any time and scroll back through and find out all the information and other questions that people have posed about covering letters, queries, just general things that's quite useful. But here's another one that you can look for on Twitter and it's the hashtag MSWL, which is Manuscript Wishlist. 
This is where agents post what they are looking for in new books. All agents are forming lists of clients and have a wide variety even within one or two genres. But what they sometimes say is, I'd be really interested in seeing a book that has X, Y and Z elements. Or maybe they say, I've had quite a lot of submissions in this genre, but I also represent this genre. I'd really like to see submissions in this space. But there are a number of agents that post on there and talk about the kind of things that they're interested in. So if you have a book that fits any of these parameters that is in the right genre, you've got a connection there. You've got a note. You've got something else to put in your covering letter. I recently saw that you posted about X on this date. Here's my book. It contains these elements. And that's something you'd include in your covering letter. But also it's quite useful to find out about the tastes of individual agents. Because remember, you're going to be forming a professional working relationship with a person and you want them to be passionate about your book and your work. So if you re read their manuscript wish list and it matches everything that you're talking about in your book, then that's brilliant. It shows that there's something there and it's worth submitting to them. Agents also post on there about things like when they close their list. They have so many submissions coming in every week, every month. Sometimes an agent will say, right, I'm closing the doors for three or four months to catch up on everything that's been sent in. And then at the end of it, I'll open it back up. So you have an awareness of what's going on with agents. You can find out about them as individuals. You could go onto their websites and then see the kind of other clients that they represent. Is it the same sort of thing of you? And just get a bit of a feel for who they are as people and the kind of stuff that they're looking for. Now that isn't to say you should try and write a book depending on what they've said. If you have a book that already fits those elements, that's great. Never write for trends, never chase a trend, because by the time you finish the book, the trend is probably gone. So you shouldn't do that. But this is a useful tool on Twitter to find out more. Even if you're not on Twitter and you don't have an account, you can just go on and search for this hashtag and it'll pop up and you can browse through it and find it as a useful resource for submitting to agents in the future. I've also done some other videos on submitting to agents. I've done one on agent tips. I've done a couple on publishing myths. So if you're thinking about traditional publishing, this is feedback from agents, from editors, from an event I attended fairly recently. And the rest of it is also from my own experience that I've picked up over years. So things for you to avoid, pitfalls that hopefully you won't fall into. So I hope all of this is quite useful for you. If you are going to try and get an agent and send out a query letter, then good luck to you. And I'll be back soon with another video.